um, 283cc engine. It's 76 and a quarter piston by 62 millimeter stroke. Air cooled, um, running a jet ski piston, 30 mil carb and a TSR Evo exhaust. This is Harry Barlow's engine, so this is an o oversized uh, crankcase mouth welded onto an LI150 casing so they can take a spigot at, capable of taking 76 and a quarter mil piston. If you look at the cylinder it looks essentially like a TS1 and then you realise everything's bigger. So we've got uh, A transfers, B transfers and a large boost port over the top. It runs a TS1 a reed valve and it has a TS1 exhaust flange as well. So the principal idea of the scooter was just to be a long distance tourer so I wanted decent suspension and um, brakes throughout as well. So this is a home built um, floating disc and what I've used to create this are essentially go-kart parts. Now go-kart back axles come in different sizes, 25mm, 30mm, 40mm, 50mm and this is based on the top of the range 50mm kit. And essentially what I've done is created a small axle of 50 millimetres with a keyway cut in it. And that allows me then to slide components that would normally go on the back axle of a go-kart to uh, fit these items. So this disc, for example, floating disc, is directly off a 250cc um, performance cart. Uh, the wheel uh, is held, sorry, the rim is held onto the uh, wheel with a, a large disc, which again is suspended on a sprocket. Uh, carrier that you would normally find on the back axle of a cart and the components just slide on so it allows you then to centralize the wheel centralize the disc so it's in the best position for the caliper and on this occasion I'm using a caliper from SIP I have got plans to upgrade this to a four pot caliper but this two pot caliper does very well indeed and you can see it has a mechanical anti-dive in it and the geometry looks about right to me one two three four points um, parallelogram and you can adjust that, uh, the, the front fitting at the, at the top as well. You've got yes, there's some adjustment here. So there's four different positions I can put that in, but frankly I haven't uh, needed to deviate from this original position, which is the best one for the par parallelogram. Okay, so um, there are a few things I wanted to encompass on this, one of which was I wanted to get a sat-nav in. So here's the sat-nav, but I wanted to get it as high a position as possible because when they've been mounted down low down here, what I tend to find is that people crashing at the back of tractors and things when they should be really be looking where they're going. So, uh, so in order to accommodate that, I've created my own version of Sticky's um, well-known coast-to-coast um, uh, screen. And this is made cut from alloy and then welded on in a couple of places in order to provide this, um, this protection for the sat-nav. Um, but below here, you can see I've got a clear lens, um, which I created myself from vacforming carrying two spotlights, uh, one for dip, one for main, um, which I can also use to, uh, which, which, which have got um, a riding light, driving light there as well. So we'll switch that on. So there's the driving light, which when you're immediately behind it is quite bright. And if you move on to the main lights, also gone for indicators on this scooter as well. Um, just because really it's nice to have an option that you can leave on uh, when you haven't got that spare hands to, to signal. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Um, this is an Acewell item that I've put in. If anyone else is building something like this, uh, this has um, been made with some aluminium which has been dropped into the thing. Remember that really Lambretta got this right when they put the speedo at that angle. This one's actually quite difficult to read. Um, and really I rely on the sat nav now for, for my speed um, as well as directions. Um, but it's good to have this here on the occasions where I leave this in another vehicle. Um, and then I've got the um, switch from the LI which has got indicators here as well as your dip and main. And <laughs> And a horn. Little sticks. Sticky. Yes. Down here I've got um, a kill switch, just as well really, with the horn gets stuck on. Uh, there's a light to indicate that the, the, the battery is charging. This is um, a smart light so that if the battery isn't charging it will go amber and if it's got no charging, hardly any charging at all it goes red. But most of the time it's green. Uh, one of Anthony Tam's speedos. I've got a fuel gauge in here as well. And this is a smart little bit of kit. It's got um, 
a couple of USBs in here, but in this hole in the middle, we won't be able to see this on the video, it also displays the voltage that's currently coming through. So when the engine's running, if you can see 14.4 volts or more, then you know you're getting a good charge into the battery. It's a dry cell back, uh, no, it's a burger alarm battery, so it can be mounted at any angle and it's hidden underneath the panels. Right, okay. We've also got a pressure gauge. First thing you want when you open your, um, uh, when you go to refuel is your, is your thing, so that's sitting there. Uh, and around the corner here, we've got another couple of USBs on an isolation switch as well. Just here, we've got a, a seat release so that we can go underneath for the seat. And you stick your pans around to the seat. That comes up. Uh, sophisticated spring pin put in there. But uh, you can see, I've, uh, I found this about 30 odd years ago, holding up a, um, a cover on a noisy dot matrix printer. And I thought one day that will be useful. And eventually it did become useful. Uh, the seat I've made myself, um, and then it had it covered by John McCorkin, Dale Corky, to you. Uh, there's useful additions in there as well um, and as you can see he's made a very nice job of, um, of covering that up right so panel off you can see a few changes for the around this area here and one of the things I wanted to incorporate in this was an air filter um, because I wanted to keep all the muck out of the carburetor so first of all the carburetor is a 30 millimeter uh, pH no, it's not PH, it's VHSH30 uh, carb. So not too big for given the capacity of the machine. Um, and these bellows have come from uh, Subaru perhaps, yeah. And that's got a nice 63 millimeter, so clamped straight onto there. Uh, 63 millimeter here, made up a little angled thing. And the air filter sits effectively where the air filter does on a standard Lambretta. Um, in fact, uh, it even breathes air in through the through the hole at the top and in fact there's even air being breathed through behind this this uh, grill as well right okay so um, the idea is to get plenty of air in there but of course it does run hot under here anyway so it's not exactly bringing in perfect nice cold air but it's the best we can do under the circumstances we've only got so much space to play with uh, the exhaust is TSR this is a new addition to the scooter uh, it's giving a bit more torque at the bottom end which is lovely um, because frankly I didn't want a 90 mile an hour scooter I wanted something that was a bit real world um, would when you drop the clutch it would pull from sort of 3000 rpm uh, quite comfortably in the traffic and uh, it is very easy to ride in in the traffic because the um, because it's got so much torque the tank uh, has got this large cutout for the air filter it wraps around the far side as well, so it's got quite plenty of capacity, probably about uh, 12 litres. Frankly, I don't need a tank bigger than that because, frankly, my arse cannot stand more than three quarters of an hour, an hour, uh, in the saddle before I feel the need to fill up with petrol and stretch my legs. The inlet manifold is one made by Jimmers, a uh, cast item. I was able to machine that uh, and weld it a little bit and push the carburetor right in in order to give as much clearance as possible to allow this uh, large air filter to uh, operate underneath the panel without rubbing. Okay, so R1 shock, nothing really, particularly radical there, and you can see the CDI box as well. But what you can't see is that on the other side, there is another CDI box uh, running uh, alongside it. Now, the engine is only connected to one of them at any given time, but in the event of a breakdown, say in the middle of Europe when you're trying to prove an uh, electrical fault, it's a matter of swapping between the two which takes two or three minutes and then swapping over the HT leads. Now in fact we can see an HT lead here there's also in there somewhere the other HT lead so it's simply a matter of swapping the HT leads over, swapping over a couple of wires, kick it over and if it starts you're a happy man and you can get to the next destination for a nice cup of tea. Long distance touring sometimes requires a lot of luggage and sometimes you want to go to the shops with not much luggage at all so what I've built here is something that, first of all, that was able to hold my indicators for me. So there's a little subframe painted the same colour as the scooter, which sits down here. And onto that, I can bolt on, the bolts here, three different types of rack. One is a little, like a little sprint rack. We've got this medium-sized rack. And I've got a two-tier rack, which allows me to carry my top box on top and my tent and my sleeping bag in there as well. So it really is built for the long-distance touring. Uh, and then I'll complement that with panniers as well. And then I'll put LED lighting in the back um, 
and we have and uh, very kindly K2 Custom have provided me with this uh, rather gorgeous one-off uh, number plate for me as well with the GB sticker on. Thanks, Keith. So one of the jobs we all hate doing at the side of the road, um, trying to fix something, is getting these things off. They always take too long. So rather than relying on the bolts that are in here, I've made provision for captive nuts behind these um, crosshead screws. They come straight out. You can undo that one as well in the same way as the slug uh, fitting does. Uh, and that comes off a treat. Um, same on both sides so you can get that off nice quick because whenever you do break down of course it's always raining. On this side we've got um, we've got the other electrical system we've been playing about with today which is why it looks a bit untidy. Okay so here's the tap for the uh, fuel. This is a vacuum operated tap not a vacuum pump so I no longer need a fuel tap here and I've moved the choke cable choke up onto the handlebars anyway so uh, that keeps the area around here nice and clean.